Yes, our windfalls are of various kinds. Some customers are ignorant, and then I touch a dividend on my superior knowledge. Some are dishonest. And in that case, I profit by my virtue. <laughs> you come to me on Christmas Day, when you know that I am alone in my house. Put up my shutters and make a point of refusing business. Well, you'll have to pay for that. My loss of time, when I should be balancing my books. I am the essence of discretion and ask no awkward questions. But when a customer cannot look me in the eye, he has to pay for it. <laughs> you can give as usual a clear account of how you came into possession of the object. Still your uncle's cabinet, a remarkable collector. This time you are in error. I have not come to sell, but to buy. My uncle's cabinet is bare to the wainscoat, even if it were still intact. I have done well on the stock exchange and should more likely add to it than otherwise, and my errand today is simple. I seek a Christmas present for a lady, and certainly I owe you every excuse for thus disturbing you upon so small a matter. But I neglected this yesterday. I must produce my little compliment at dinner, and, as you very well know, a rich marriage is not a thing to be neglected. Well, sir, so be it. You are an old customer after all. And if, as you say, you have the chance of a good marriage, far be it from me to be an obstacle. Here is a nice thing for a lady now. This hand glass, 15th century, warranted, comes from a good collection too. A glass? A glass for Christmas? Surely not. And why not? Why not a glass? You ask me why not, but look at it. Look at it yourself. Do you like to see it? No, nor I, nor does any man. <laughs> Your future lady, sir, must be pretty hard favored. I ask you for a Christmas present, and you give me this? This, this cursed reminder of years and of sins and follies? This hand conscience. Did you mean it? Did you think? I mean, tell me, did you think at all? It will be better for you if you do. Now come, tell me about yourself. I hazard a guess now that are you in a... Are you secretly a very charitable man? What are you driving at? Not charitable? Not charitable? Not pious? Scrupulous? Unloving? Unbeloved? A hand to get money? A safe to keep it? Is that it? Dear God, man, is that all you are? I will tell you what it is. <laughs> but I see this is a love match of yours, and you have been drinking the lady's health. Ah, have you been in love? T please tell me about that. I? I in love? I never had the time. Nor have I the time today for all this nonsense. Will you take the glass? Oh, what's the hurry? It is very pleasant to stand here talking. And life is so short and insecure that I would not hurry away from any such pleasure. No, not even from so mild a one as this. We should rather cling, cling to what little we can get, like a man at a cliff's edge. Every second is a cliff, if you think upon it, a cliff a mile high. High enough that if we fall, to dash out of every feature of humanity. Hence, it is best to talk pleasantly. Let us be confidential. Who knows, we might become friends. I have just one word for you. Make your purchase. Or get out. True. Uh, true. Enough fooling. To business then. Show me something else. This perhaps may suit.
time was that when the brains were out. He helps by you? No. Never. Not by you. You do not know me yet. Thank God you do not know me. I know you. I know you to the soul. Know me? Who could do so? Who could know me? My life is but a travesty and a slander upon myself. I am worse than most. Myself is more overlaid. My excuse is known to me and God. But had I the time, I could disclose myself. To you before all, I suppose you were intelligent, that since you exist, you would prove a reader to the heart, and yet you would propose to judge me by my actions. You would judge me by my acts? Can you not look within? Can you not understand that evil is hateful to me? Can you not see that within the clear writing of my conscience, never blurred by willful sophistry, although too often disregarded? Can you not read me as a thing that must be common as humanity, 
the unwilling sinner? Oh, this is feeling experience. But it regards me not. These points of consistency are beyond my province. And I care not to the least by what compulsion you may have been dragged away. So you are but carried in the right direction. But time flies. The servant delays, looking in the faces of the crowd and the pictures on the horns. But still, she keeps moving nearer. And remember, it is as if I will take nothing in your hand. If I were dying of thirst and it was your hand that put the pitcher to my lips, I should find the courage to refuse. It may be credulous, but I will do nothing to commit myself to that. Because you disbelieve their efficacy. suppose me such a creature? Do you think I have no more generous aspirations than to sin and sin and sin than at the last second sneak into heaven? My heart rises at the thought. Is this then your experience of mankind? Or is it because you find me with red hands that you consume such baseness? Is th and is this crime of murder indeed so impious as to dry up the very springs of good?
with human gore than such a murderer as yourself. Do I say that I follow sin? I follow virtues also. They differ not by the thickness of a nail. They are both scars for the reaping angel of death. Evil for which I live consists not in action, but in character. The bad man is dear to me, not the bad act, whose fruits, if we could follow them, far enough down the rattling cataract of the ages, might yet be found more blessed than those of the rarest virtues. And it is not because you are have killed a dealer, but because you are my kind that I offer to forward your escape. I will lay my heart open to you. The crime on which you find me is my last. On my way to it, I have learned many lessons. Itself is a lesson, a momentous lesson. Hitherto, I have been driven with revolt to what I would not. I was a bond slave to poverty, driven and scourged. There are robust virtues that can stand in these temptations. Mine was not so. I had a thirst of pleasure. But today, and out of this deed, I pluck both warning and riches, both the power and a fresh resolve to be myself. I become in all things a free actor in the world. I begin to see myself all changed, these hands the agents of good, this heart at pace. Something comes over me out of the past, something of what I have dreamed on Sabbath evenings to the sound of the church organ, of what I forecast when I shed tears over noble books or talks, an innocent child with my mother. There lies my life. I have wandered a few years, but now I see once more the city of destination. You are to use the money. On the stock exchange, I think. And there, if I mistake not, you have already lost some thousands. Ah, but this time I have a short thing. This time, again, you will lose. But, but I will keep back the half. That also will you lose. Well then, what matter? Say it be lost, say I am plunged again into poverty. Shall one part of me, and that the worst, continue until the end to override the better? Evil and good run strong in me, hauling me both ways. I do not love one thing, I love all. I can conceive great deeds, renunciations, martyrdoms, and though I have been fallen to such a crime as murder, pity is no stranger to my thoughts. I pity the poor. Who knows their trials better than me? I pity them and help them. I prize love. I love honest laughter. There is neither good thing nor true thing on earth, but I love it from the heart. And are my voices only to direct my life and my virtues to lie without effect, like some passive lumber of the mind? Not so. Good also is a spring of acts. For thirty-six years that you have been in this world, through many changes of fortune and varieties of humor, I have watched you. Steadily fall. Fifteen years ago, you would have started at a death. Here, years ago, you would have pledged recoil at the name of murder. Is there any crime? Is there any cruelty or meanness? Through which you still recoil. Five years from now, I shall detect you in the fact. Down, down, lies your way. Nor can anything but death avail to stop you. I have in some degree complied with evil, but it is so with all. The very saints, in the mere exercise of living, grow less dainty and take on the tone of their surroundings. I will propound to you one simple question, and as you answer, I shall read to you your moral horoscope. You have grown lax in many things. Possibly, you do right to do so. And at 
down in all. Say clearly, for what remains for me by way of duty. I thank you for these lessons from my soul. My eyes have been opened, and I will hold myself at least for what I truly am. The maid! She has returned as I forewarned you, and there is now before you one more difficult passage. Her master, you must say, is ill. You must let her in. With an assured, but rather serious countenance. No smiles, no overreacting, and I promise you success. Once the girl was within, and the door closed, the same dexterity that has already riddled the dealer will relieve you of this last danger in your path. Thenceforward, you have the whole evening. treasures of the house, and to make good your safety. This is the help that comes to you with the mask of danger. Up, up, friend. Your life hangs trembling the balance. Up, and act. I be condemned to evil acts. There is still one door of freedom open. I can cease from action. If my life be nothing, I can lay it down. Though I be, as you say truly, at the beck of every small temptation, I can yet, by one decisive gesture, place myself beyond the reach of all. My love of good is damned to badness. It may, and let it be. But I have still my hatred of evil, and from that to your galling disappointment, you shall see that I can draw both energy and courage. Better go for the police. I've killed your master.
Testing eight inches away. Testing six inches away. Testing four inches away. You better go for the police. Uh, I just killed your master. Who cares about that old geezer? You're smoking hot. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. love. Ah, have you been in love? T please tell me about that. So, Charlotte, are you doing anything later? Not yet, sir. Well, maybe I could arrange something. I? I in love? I never had the time. <laughs> <laughs>